Hello there, I'm Colin, and welcome back. And tonight we are not drinking to celebrate. We're drinking in sorrow, because as you can tell by that title, my soy sauce project has failed. All right, so let's get into why did it fail? Well, the number one reason is, is I totally forgot about it and neglected it, even though people online were like, hey, how's that soy sauce coming? Holidays and work stuff, pandemic life. It all got the better of me and I forgot to keep stirring it and keep checking on it. And I looked at it the other day and let's just say I can tell right away it's gonna be a failure. So why don't you come along with me and we'll go dig in and figure out what all went wrong. Okay, so here's my studio fermentation chamber shooting space. And then over this way is my disgustingly dirty laundry room. And sitting on top of these paint buckets is our good old friend, Mr. Soy Sauce. So I'll bring that in the studio. We'll take a look at it. So as you can see by the outside wood here, um, yeah, it started to seep through um, the wood, the cracks in the wood. So I got a lot of water loss, I can tell already by how much has crept through the wood. It's probably because I didn't make this very well. I'm not a cooper. So as you can see, we got some leakage through the cracks, almost every joint. You can tell that some stuff has crept out of there. So before you put your soy sauce in there, you're supposed to soak this vessel so that we can swell. And then that way uh, it's a lot more watertight. I don't think I soaked it long enough. So that's the first thing I did wrong. I did not soak the kiyoki properly. That was the first thing. Now, as I open this up and I look down inside, you can tell that I had not stirred this for a super long time and that we have some very significant drying out of the product and some significant mold growth. In fact, I don't think I should be sticking my head over this right now. So because I didn't stir it and because we had water loss, that salt water that keeps everything from growing mold or other bacteria or organisms, that did not continue to protect everything. And I didn't keep stirring it, keeping it under. I didn't keep an eye on it. And so it went like this. So that was the second thing is I forgot about it. I left it alone and I had a lot of water loss. So as you can tell, there's also like, it looked like black mold growing up the sides of the wood. So I'm not even sure if this kiyoki is salvageable at this point, if it's a boil and clean, if that can even work. So if you know better than me, please let me know. Is this thing reusable if I clean it out or do I need to toss this and make another one? So that's a bummer. <laughs> and you know, we're six, seven months later and I still haven't made one and I haven't gotten around to trying again for round two, but that changes today. Today I'm going to remake it and hopefully we're going to do some things differently. They're going to help us do better this time. So the first thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to take out the Kiyoki and I'm going to use a glass vessel this time. So that should really help us to take out the variable of the wood and prevent, you know, a bunch of water loss and prevent stuff from leaking out. Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be setting up some serious, robust reminders in my life to stir the soy sauce. Uh, I'm also gonna be keeping it in a more prominent place so that way I see it more often. It was stored in the laundry room for a while, but in like a place where it was behind the door. And so a lot of times I wouldn't even see it. I wanna make it sit out in a place where I have to deal with it all the time so I don't forget to stir it. All right, so without further ado, let's get to batch number two. I did not intend that to rhyme, I am so sorry. So again, like we did last time, soybeans have been soaking for like four or five hours. And now I'm gonna go on ahead and start to toast the wheat at 340 degrees for about an hour. And I'm gonna stir every 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go get started on that. All right, so I'm gonna bring these soybeans up to a boil 
then reduce down to simmer. And we're gonna cook these for about 60 minutes. We wanna get them mushy so they'll squish lightly in our fingers, but we don't want them too mushy to where it's just goop. We need to allow the, you know, koji to be able, those spores to be able to get in under the skin. So we just need to squish it enough. But yeah, you don't wanna make it goop, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so these are finally done uh, boiling, simmering, and yep, I can squish it lightly with a finger. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain these. All right, so it's time to grind our grain. Now it says to add it all into the hopper and then turn it on at speed 10. So let's see how that goes. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Got it. So I'm editing this right now and I realized I didn't tell you, uh, for Christmas, my sister got me a grain crusher, which is why I'm not uh, using a food processor or anything like that. So thank you to my sister, Rianne, for that wonderful present. That's another part of just making the soy sauce process go easier is let's just use a good piece of equipment here and it did a great job. So again, thanks. All right, so next I need to combine the wheat and soybeans and I'll actually just do that right here in the same pot that I had the beans in. They're all drained now. And I'm gonna just give that a mix with a spoon. All right, so now I've got my koji tray and I'm gonna put a damp towel down in here. And then we're gonna load this mixture up into here. And then I'm gonna just go on ahead and spread everything out evenly. All right, so now I got this all laid out evenly and excuse the B-roll cam right here. I'm trying to give you guys a good shot. And I've got just a plain old tea strainer right here. And I'm going to put some koji spores in this tea strainer. And I'm just using a sake homebrew koji. You can get uh, kojis that are really specifically made for shoyu, things like that. But this sake one is gonna be just fine. I just have to be able to get it out of the dang package. There we go. And I'm doing this over a bulk, some comes through here. And then yeah, we're just gonna go through and tap on and spread out some koji spores all over this thing. And it's okay, a little bit goes a long way. Like a tablespoon of this stuff will definitely do this whole batch. Um, don't worry if it's not looking like super, super powdery on everything. It's gonna be all right. And I'm only gonna do probably like one more little batch of this. Oh, you can just shake it. Yeah, there we go. Let's get those spores everywhere. Now I'm gonna do a stir and incorporate that koji through everything. And then I'm gonna do one more tiny inoculation just to make sure we get stuff all up in there. Inoculation, here we go. And if you do the shake method, a lot more comes out than if you do the tap method. So I recommend the tap method if you're gonna use a tea strainer like this. And you know what, let's get whatever's left in that bowl we're gonna do right here. All right, this now goes into your fermentation chamber. Remember to put the probe in here for the temperature. And we've got the temperature at like 77 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity is gonna be set around 75%. So we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours and we'll see you then. Oh. 
All right, so it's already been 24 hours and we already have quite a bit of growth activity, which is pretty cool. So now I need to stir this up, break it up, and then we're going to go on ahead and make three furrowed rows. And we're gonna put it back in the fermentation chamber. And this time we're upping the temperature to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's do it. So I have to warn you that from here on out, almost every shot is out of focus and it's the kind of thing I cannot reshoot and I'm so sorry. So I'm gonna try to do as much B-roll as possible. And if you see stuff that you're like, he didn't shoot that, that's weird what's happening. I'm just trying to limit how much time I'm showing this bad out of focus stuff. So uh, thank you for still watching. All right, so I'm done with the fermentation chamber part and getting that koji sprouted. As you can see, we're looking really good. So now all we gotta do is put this mixture in a salt water brine. So I'm gonna uh, heat up some water, dissolve some salt in there, and then combine this all together. All right, so now I've got the salt in the water and we're good to go, but right now we're at 135 degrees. We need to make sure that comes down to about 95 before we mix it with this. We don't want to kill anything off. So while I wait for that to cool down, I'm gonna actually put our uh, koji mixture in this glass vessel. Now we want to break this up and then get it in our glass vessel. Get everything all stirred up. Yeah, look at how good that growth penetrated down into everything in there. Yeah, it's looking real good. And the smell is like, like the wheat, the smell of the wheat is like the strongest thing, but it's like a fermented, really umami rich wheat smell, if that makes any sense. It's really hard to describe such unique odors. But yeah, look at all of that. That's looking fantastic. That koji has just gotten all up in there. Fermentation chamber worked great. It held on the humidity and the temperature really well that whole time. So I was really pleased with how that turned out. Fermentation chamber is a champ. I recommend my cheapo setup. The only thing that I have that's not cheap on mine is the Inkbird controllers. They're like 50, 80 bucks a pop. But I have seen people who have used something called Arduino to write their own code to be able to use Arduino and relays and a temperature and a humidity sensor to control um, their devices in their fermentation chamber. So if you're an electronics coding nerd and you wanna get into that, go for it, it's gonna be fun. I wish that I was into Arduino before I got my setup because I would have liked to have built those things. Because again, you gotta build everything right. All right, I'm gonna put this stuff in our glass vessel here. Maybe we'll all do a towel maneuver. Maybe not. You know what, let's get some more of this out of there before we try a towel maneuver. All right, so my water has cooled down to 95 degrees. So we got the salt water that used to go in on top here. Let's see if I can do this without making it too sloppy. And will this all fit in this vessel? I think it's gonna be like a glove. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. Now I'll give it a little bit of a stir here. Make sure everybody gets some nice salt water all mixed up right on in there. All right, so now we're gonna pat everything down and try and get everything in contact and under that salt water. 
So it's interesting. We got a lot of stuff that's floating and a lot of stuff that is not floating. So now what we're gonna do is take a piece of saran wrap and we're gonna put it down inside so it's sitting on the surface and it'll help keep air from touching stuff and keep that, keep everything in contact with that salt water. We're gonna just get this in there and all up in everything's grill. Kind of pat everything down. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is take a loose fitting towel here. We're just gonna go ahead and place that over top of this. And then we're gonna put the lid on kind of crooked. So basically we want some gases to be able to get out and we want this towel to not come off. Now I could just use a rubber band or something, but this will be just fine. And now I let this sit in a cool place at normal humidity for four months and I'm gonna stir every day for the first two weeks. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's finally like back on track. It's crazy to have gone this long and not have tried my own homemade soy sauce yet, but I'm in it for the long haul. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make it. So yeah, now it's all I do is have a celebratory drink. So I chose this bourbon because it is a weeded bourbon and there's wheat in the show you. So thank you for joining me. Sorry that I don't have a soy sauce tasting and that I didn't have like all these cool updates to share with you about what happened the last time. Again, I'm gonna better document everything as we go along and I'm gonna take a lot better care of this one than I did the last one. I'm still bummed at what a waste that was, but you know, failure is part of my channel. In case you haven't noticed, I'm clearly not an expert at anything and I'm just trying to learn and do some fun projects along the way. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.